Hello guys, welcome back to Piping Engineers. In today's video, we will again learn about the piping interview questions. So guys, this is the seventh video of our piping interview question series. For other videos, you can follow this the i link. We will put the other videos and you can watch those videos from the playlist. So let's begin our today's video and learn about the piping interview question. So guys, our first question: What is a flange? You all would have seen the flange in your day-to-day -day life or in your industry. So your interviewer can ask you what is a flange. So guys, a flange is a mechanical connection between two pipes. Basically, it is used to connect two pipes and they are used to connect components like valve, choke, etc. So this is uh, the definition of flange. And if someone asks you what is a flange, you can tell him about the flange from here. Next is what are the properties of the conveyed fluids that must be considered for a piping? So this is a very normal question that can be asked by your interviewer. So the properties of fluid that is used to convey are the type of fluid we should be knowing. We should know the flow rate. We should know what is the pressure and temperature of the fluid that will be transported. So these are the properties that must be uh, known before we, a fluid is conveyed through the piping. Let's move on to the next question. Next question is what are the major categories of piping? So an interviewer can ask you what are the major categories of piping. So broadly speaking, there are two categories of piping. One is your, your large bore piping and another is your small bore piping. So large bore piping pipe sizes having pipes having sizes more than two inches becomes under your large bore piping while the pipes under the uh, two inches having diameter having under two inches they belong to your small bore piping. Let's see the next question. Next question is what is the importance of piping engineering? You know guys plants are set based on the large piping. So what is the importance of this piping engineering? This is a very general question that can be asked and answer to is it is piping engineer can, can be explained as designing, constructing and fabricating lines for conveying fluids. So the only thing that is used to convey fluids from one part of the plant to another part is your piping. So the piping should maintain pressure and temperature difference and it also maintain, it also must maintain the flow rate. So this is the importance of piping engineering. Moving on to the next question, what, where do we use power piping? So again, important question, they may even ask you what is the code that is used for power, uh, power piping and what is the ASME code that we used for process piping. So the question here is where do we use power, power piping? So your power piping is mostly used in electric power generating stations, your geothermal heating stations and district heating and cooling systems. So uh, if you design or if you work on these systems, the codes or the standards that you will follow will be of power piping. Next is where do we use process piping guys? So the process piping they are mostly used in your petroleum refineries, your chemical, pharmaceutical, textile, paper processing or your steel plants or many or other process industries which you can think of. So this is where your process piping is used. Moving on to the next question guys, explain the design pressure. So you all must be aware that there are uh, one is your design pressure, another is your operating pressure. So what is the design pressure? So the design pressure, it is the maximum pressure of each component in a piping system. So this pressure uh, this pressure of the component should not ex should not be should not be less than high pressure which could incur during the service or this is the maximum pressure that a system can take so that is your design pressure and operating pressure is the normal pressure at which your plant will operate so basic difference between uh, operating and design pressure comes from here Moving on to next guys, your next question is elaborate piping. So this is again a very basic question, but people generally get, gets confused in this type of question. So what is piping? So piping can be described as assembly of pipes, fittings, valves, instruments and specialty components. So all those items which are used in your piping system to complete the conveying of fluid, it is it uh, it is falls under your piping or you elaborate piping under uh, these things. So moving on to next, what are the major components in piping system? So again, answers will be your pipes, your fittings, your gaskets, bolting, walls, pipe supports. So each and everything that is related with piping 
uh, that is that are used in a system to complete the system and to convey fluid from one part of the plant to another part are known are the main components that falls under the piping system moving on to the next question dosto explain steam tracing so steam tracing you would have heard in many pulp plants uh, generally steam tracing is done where temperature is an issue so what is steam tracing it is a process to prevent the fluid passing through process line from freezing by keeping temperature high or for free flow of fluid and thus maintaining pumpability so guys where a fluid that can uh, that can get freeze due to the temperature drop like your cold tar steam tracing is done so basically what happens is your steam gives heat to that fluid so that it stays in liquid form or it doesn't get solidified so this is why your steam tracing is used moving on to the next question what should be done before conducting flushing and hydro test so if you are going for a constructor uh, construction piping construction engineer interview so this may be the asked to you so certain components such as control walls or if plates rotameters safety walls thermo wells they all are dropped and instead of those temporary spools are used so guys tell me in the in the comments that why these components are dropped and instead of these spools are used so you have to tell me why why these are dropped so uh, if you will tell me then we will be able to know that whether you know the things of piping or not so these are dropped but why these are dropped you have to tell me moving on to the next question guys what could be the consequences if there is a steam piping with low pocket but without any steam trap so what happens if, if you don't use steam trap in your piping system and if low pockets are formed so in that case your condensate buildup will be happen to a point that slug will be pushed by the steam flow the slug condensate could cause water hammer and it could damage the piping so in general word uh, steam uh, your condensate will uh, start enclosing your condensate will start uh, coming in the pipe or it will start accumulating in the pipe due to which your water hammering could occur and due to which your piping could damage could be damaged so that's why a steam trap it is required in your steam pipeline generally at your low points to remove the condensate from steam piping moving on to the next question guys why do we use a full bore valve in connecting pipeline of a launcher receiver so it is used for pigging so the answer is it is used for a pigging that's why a full bore is used in connecting pipeline of a launcher receiver moving on to the next guys classification of flanges according to phase so an interviewer may ask you you would have seen different types of flanges but if how do we classify them based on the different types of faces so uh, based on your face sides they are flat face your raised face your tongue and groove and ring type joint so these are the faces of flanges generally your flaced flat face and raised face are the two types of flanges that are used or that are found in your day to day piping jobs moving on to the next question what are the different types of gaskets so your different types of gaskets are full face spiral wound octagonal ring metal jacketed and inside bolt circle so for gaskets guys we have a separate video you will find the link here in i button please click on this link and watch separate videos on gaskets for more information moving on to the next question what where should we do a branch connection so it is always important you should know that where do we need to do a branch connection in piping so if uh, if, if your if your fluid flowing through the pipe is gas then or air or steam then the then the branch connection is given on the top side of the pipeline but if it is if it, if it is water then the branch connection it is done in uh, it is done at the bottom side of the pipe water or you may say any liquid so your connection will be done from your bottom part moving on to the next question why do we use blind flange in pipeline you would have seen blind uses you would have seen blind flanges in your pipeline so the uses is if there is a change that should be done for piping in the future and also for cleaning and inspection so that's why blind flanges are used where should be a centrifugal pump must be located in a vacuum service so where should we place a centrifugal pump if the service is a vacuum service so it must be directly below the tower moving on to the next question and last question for the day guys what are the requirements of suction line so in suction line there are specific things that needs to be placed 
so what are the requirements so for a suction line you, you should have a reducer you again you have to tell me in comments which type of reducer do we place in suction line and what type of reducer is in your uh, discharge line your strainer will be there your block wall will be there pockets and proper straight straight length so guys uh, i hope you would have learned about the piping engineering questions thank you for watching the videos for more videos and updates guys like follow and subscribe to our channel thank you for watching the videos guys thanks a lot